Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. And once again, I'm copying somebody else's video just to help somebody else that's a little bit confused because there's no talking and well, there is, but it's not in English. And a couple of the steps I'm going to do a little bit differently and and hopefully you can do a better job on the shadow, but it kind of looks like a twirling ribbon. And it doesn't matter what size, I'm just going to take an ellipse, make it elongated. I'm going to hit the plus key on the keyboard start moving and hold down the control button so they're equal. You didn't really have to worry about that because you could go left or right. Then we're going to take a two-point line and we're going to put it here and I'm going to select them all and I'm going to go right and that put that line right on the edge. Now I'm going to I'm going to do it a little bit different than the gentleman, the gentleman did. Uh, I'm not saying my way is better, but I think it'll be a little bit easier to understand. I'm going to just bring that in to about there. So now we have three different shapes. This thing is 13 inches big. We're gonna change, well, let's see how big this is. Um, well, let's set our nudge factor on five inches. And we're gonna take these items and we're gonna fill that in and we're gonna nudge it over twice to get it out of the way. And then this way you can kind of see the lines. Now he did do something that makes it a little bit more difficult to, difficulty, but not that big a deal. And the one probably the easiest way to do would just hit the plus key on your keyboard. This is, I think, the part the person didn't understand. And then just bring this in a little bit. What that's going to do is going to give you a double line, and we're going to see that in just a second. Now I'm going to select that. I'm going to shift select that. I'm going to weld it. So now we have this object. I'm going to group this together, control G. And then I'm going to hit the plus key on the keyboard. I'm going to move it out of the way for a second. I'm going to mirror it horizontally, mirror it vertically. And now we can take it because it's a group and we can have it snap right to that line. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. See, oh, I'm pretty close. I'm dead on. Now you can take this shape, hold down the shift key, take this shape and weld it. That doesn't work all the time. So what I'm going to do a little bit differently than he did, I am going to select this and this. And I think it's because the person was grouping it together, but I'm just gonna take that line away. And for some reason it didn't delete it all, but that doesn't, I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. Um, didn't really change anything. We can always smart fill it later. I'm gonna group this together and hit this plus key on the keyboard. And I'm gonna move that section and it should snap if I get to that point and there you go, but we need to do the same thing. We just need to take this line away and leave that line. And I, you could continue on. Let's do one more. Um, well, let's make it even longer. Let's hit the plus key on the keyboard, move this down to there. I'm not there, I kind of messed it up. But you can always grab it. And what that double line is gonna do, it's gonna create a effect that looks like a tube or the thickness of it now at this time we'll go ahead and let's group it together just so we won't mess it up and let's rotate it 90 degrees and make it a little bit easier and you can see our tube already now we need to take the smart fill tool and use any color i'm going to use i'm going to use green this time and i'm going to fill in every spot and this is where the attribute eyedropper is going to help you we're going to select this outside one right now and you just kind of got to figure out your shadowing. But well, I'm going to go interactive fill, and I'm going to put a little bit different, darker color at the bottom and put that green back at the top. Whoop, I didn't hit it. Grab that green and put it at the top. And then this is where you could play around with it. You could actually make this a little bit darker at the bottom, make it look like it's kind of actually spinning or, you know, just a little bit. Then this is where your attribute eyedropper can help you a lot. Take your attribute eyedropper and sample that and then do all the rest of the ones are in that same shape. You could possibly even do that, but it, well, that doesn't look half bad. But I'm gonna reverse that flow this time. I'm gonna take the interactive fill tool and I'm gonna go from here to here and I'm gonna make the top a little gray. Move this up quite a bit so it's just barely gray. And now I can use the interactive fill tool on that part and do all our inside parts. 
You could actually even use it for that and that. That looks pretty cool. And then you can take your interior parts that we made that double line, use the interactive fill tool, and you could make a darker gray, green, I mean. Let's put it like right there, or really any color you want. Kind of give it some thickness. And the same thing on the, whoop, same thing on the bottom. A lot of times you need to zoom in to do this. I'm just wondering, I haven't played around with it enough. I'm just wondering if we take away the outline now. See what it looks, I'm gonna right click. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Anyway, I hope that helped just a little bit. Thank you for watching.